What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode four of the weekly I Don't Know What I'm Talking About Sports Podcast. This podcast talking sports with the average guy. My name is Anthony, your gracious host. And if this is your first time listening, welcome. Welcome to this sports podcast. But really, I just talk sports in my studio, really my living room. But this is where I talk my sports at. And if you're coming back for another time to listen or reoccurring listening, listener, Thank you. Thank you for listening every week to my podcast, listening to me talk and have some of my crazy takes that I do. Um, Don't forget that we drop every Sunday, every Sunday on anywhere you get your podcast at Spotify, Google, um, Apple Pie, wherever you get your podcast at. Look up. I don't know what I'm talking about. Sports or IDK Sports and you will see us pop up. Or you can follow me on Instagram and get and get the link in my bio and get all the updates of everything that we're doing at IDK Sports Podcast. Um, great show this week. Great, great show, I think. Last week I was by myself. This week I have a special guest stop by. I got my lovely wife stopping by to talk about something that's dear to every sports goer, tailgating and bands. So, you know what I'm saying? One thing we're going to talk about is tailgating, it's how to navigate a tailgate. What you see at a tailgate, what makes a good tailgate, and the difference in different type of tailgates that, hey, can help you with your whole sporting experience. Also, we're going to talk about the one thing that everybody comes to see is the marching bands. If you went to HBCU, marching bands go hand in hand with the sporting events. You can't have football and no marching band. So... We're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to recap a crazy week three where it was many upsets and also a lot of close games with games you wouldn't think would be that close. But don't forget, if you're listening again, that transfer portal has changed college football. Really, and you saw it heavy this week, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Also, we're going to highlight some um, pro games that I like um, with a full slate of pro football again for week two. We're going to highlight a little bit of those games and um, see – what games I'm going to be watching this weekend. So if you're ready, let's get into it. And don't forget, we drop every Sunday. Every Sunday. And don't forget to follow us at IDK Sports Pod 23. So if you're ready, let's get into it. All right, everybody. We got a fun topic that we're talking about today. We're going to talk about tailgating and bands and who to get for this segment more than my lovely, beautiful wife to help me with this segment because she has been to a fair share of tailgates and she's also a member of... The number one, the best sorority you have ever heard of, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And I'm also a Hampton University alumni. So it's like... Go Pirates. Go. Uh, <laughs> y'all kind of like when you see me and you trying to see what's up. Don't get too much dip on your chip. Too much? Too much dip on your chip. You know what I'm saying? You see me? I'm going to have them stuck. No? Okay. Well, it's not the same sound. It's not. Okay. We won't, we'll, we'll move on. We'll move on. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to talk about is tailgating. What is a tailgate? So some people might be asking, asking, what's a tailgate? Are you asking that? I'm not asking. You're not asking. You know that part. I know that. Yeah. I got that part. Got, that's the best part. That's the best part. That's the only part why I go to games. <laughs> <laughs> so, a tailgate. A tailgate is a time when everybody gets together before the game. And it usually has food. Yep. Drinks. Definitely. Little products that we're not going to talk about. So, we can't say weed? Eh, maybe a little bit. Okay. Maybe mess with, more. What's the new kids do now? Edibles? No, I think they've always done. You can't animals. smoke a blunt on the campus, though. I mean, yes, they do. It's legal now. Boy, are we snitching? I'm not. That's not snitching. It's are, a, we, are we dry snitching a little bit? I don't think so. I don't know. Say no names. You know, saying no face, no case. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so so my tailgate though, when you have a good time, you hang out with people before the game, get yourself hyped up about the game. Um, it's usually tailgating can go with any sporting event, but it's usually known with football because. You know, it's football usually starts the earliest. It's kind of hard to tailgate for basketball. But you tailgate, you have food, drink, good time, music, everything. Now, it is two types, two different types of tailgating. You have, well, three. You got your pro tailgates. Now, that's like where you're probably going to find the most drunkest people ever. Oh, absolutely. Like, we went to the Commanders game. How do people got home? I don't know. Yeah, it was very wild. And we got there, the game started at 1, we got there at 11, and people were already drunk. 
Yeah, it was. That's that. At your pro tailgates, you're probably gonna see your most drunkest people. That's why, like at the Bills game, they jump through tables. Now, after going to a pro game, I see why, because they're like, like. Drunk, drunk. Also, going to a program, I feel like we could have gotten there earlier. We should have got there To get drunker. I was with my parents, too. Well, I'm just saying, we could have got, like, the appropriate level of drunk when you're with your parents. Drunker than we were. We had to drive back Which was dry. (laughs) (laughs) So, so anyway. Then you got your college one. Now, two different types. You got a PWI tailgate and an HBCU tailgate, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So, you know, some people might be asking if it's a PWI, or how do you know? If it's raisins in the potato salad, you're not an HBCU. Okay, but come on, let's set, talk about what PWI really stands for. Just in case someone is like, do I go to a PWI? Well, if you have to ask that question, the answer is probably yes. If you can't use a comb, no, I'm just joking. Don't do <laughs> <laughs> um, But, but no, I was just like, PWI is a Potomac, but normally... Predominantly, ooh, I ooh, can't talk. Okay, come on, get it out. Third time. It's, it's time. a white institution. Uh huh. All right, and they basically they're gonna have your hot dogs, your hamburgers, but they have nifty ideas though. Like at Old Miss, they dress up in college shirts. I, I have, I have seen that on TV. Yeah, and they have chandeliers in their tent. Okay. And they make hotty toddies. I'm here for all of that. And then, like I heard, like in, I think in Seattle they have fish, like actual sushi and stuff there. Oh wow. That's that's nasty. Oh, you like sushi though, but at not a, at a at tailgate. A game? I guess, like, what would you hold it with? Like, do you have it in like those little paper things, and you just eat eat it with your soy sauce on the side? I don't mm, know. I don't know. But then they had also have. Um, I know it's just in the Ohio states they have chili. Okay. Um, and some of them do have like smokers and ribs and stuff. This is like your down south Texas schools and stuff like that. But um, also you know. They usually have more games being played. Like, they'll play your beer pong. Right. They'll play your, uh, what's it called? Um, what's the other games they might play? Throw the football around. They'll usually have, like, a Frisbee. What do you call it when you have, like, the little potato sack thing? You throw it in the holes? Cornhole. Cornhole. Yeah, they'll play have cornhole. Yeah. yeah they, they, they have a lot of games. Okay. I wouldn't know. I've never They been. have a lot of games when you, when you go to them. I've been to one. It was in. It was, it was cool. Then you have your HBCU tailgates. Your HBCU tailgates are like usually going to be more of a vibe. Definitely a vibe. Yeah, they're not going to have like games, too many games. But what you will have is DJ. Uh huh. Everybody has their DJ, so you'll have walk past tailgate and they'll have six different songs playing. It's wild. And then they're going to have food. Now you got your old heads and you got your young ones. You know what I'm saying? Your old heads are going to have really good food. They're going to have some drink with them, but they food going to be lit. And, like, if you're in college right now, find your old head tent, say what's up, say you a, say you a student, and get your get your grub on. You know what I'm saying? Then you got the young head tents, or younger tents, all right? And these are like your young alumni. These are like your sororities and fraternities. You know, their tents are more, they're going to have food. Definitely going to have food. It's going to be pretty good. It's going to be awesome depending on which fraternity or sorority you're getting it from. Exactly. So they're going to have that. But then they're also going to have, like, your name cocktails. You know, like, some of the, for this full disclosure, some of the some of the most wasted nights I've been at is from hanging out with some fraternity people in freshman year. We won't say their names. We won't say their names. No, that's but, not appropriate. But, you know. If you went to HBCU, you know what we're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> um... But it's a, it, that's a whole experience. I'm gonna let my wife talk a little bit more about it because she's like, I'm not invited, I'm only invited by proxy because I'm married to her. <laughs> but she gets into like all the tents. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about, you know, some of the things that be going on on the Greek side of things. Well, when I think about tailgating and being a part of the Divine Nine, I think about like, just everyone looking and smelling amazing. It is the time. Smelling? Yeah. You be sniffing people at the... Well, you, go ahead, do your thing. Well, you said she was going to let me talk. Are you going to let me talk or not? 
Okay, so tailgating is like, it feels like a family reunion if I had to think about it. It's like you see people you haven't seen in a long time, specifically at homecoming. But just in general, when people come to the games, it brings everyone together. So everyone is looking good, they're smelling good, and they are just having the best time. You might be feeling, you know, have your little liquid courage. If you see somebody that you've been wanting to, you know, talk to it's a perfect time to do it and that's really what i love the most about tailgating it's like that community vibe you don't have to know a lot about sports to get the vibe but sports is the thing that brings everybody together yeah so um so tell them the truth man like so if you if you tell the people that's in college right now what what's what's the main thing you go for in the fraternity tents what are you trying to get Okay, so when I, even now, I'm trying to get alcohol and I'm trying to get food, okay? <laughs> now, there are certain fraternities that are going to have the best food and some are going to have the best alcohol. It really does depend on the culture of your school, which fraternity that is. But it is, it will behoove you to figure out which one does so you can go ahead and get that food now usually there isn't a cost to the food i've never had to pay before but it could be because i'm a part of sorority i don't know but like i said it's a family atmosphere and you also have your vendors too like it's not just the fraternity and the sororities that have the food there's other people out there selling different foods and drinks and things like that oh also pro tip so at every black homecoming I've ever been to, HBC specifically, there's going to be a lemonade person, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to get your lemonade and you're going to get the tequila, the vodka, or the rum of your choice, and you're going to put that in that lemonade and you're going to drink it for the whole tailgate. And that, my friend, is how you have a good time. Okay. So, you know, so yeah, tailgate is, like you said, it is, it is a time for everybody to come together and it's really like supporting your team. And at HBCUs, you know what I'm saying, you have people like at the Battle of the Bay last week, if it wasn't raining, you would have had people from each team coming to tailgate together. It really is a time to get together before the competition start. They really say, hey, how you doing? You know, and it's really just a get together event, right? Exactly. Um, so that's one thing people come for. Now, me personally, I come for the game. It's all about what happened in between the lines. But some people tailgate up until... It's about three minutes left in the second quarter because everybody's getting ready for the band. So yep. let's just keep it real. Half time show. At an HBCU show. Now, the PWIs, I've been to one. Like, we played Wake Forest. When the band came on, everybody left. Went nice. to the bathroom. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> they went to the bathroom. Um, But at HBCUs, people come in with their ticket just to see the bands. It's a show. It is a full performance. Just to see the bands. And... My wife is multifaceted, multi-talented around here. She was a band nerd in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you lean in with the compliment and then you just like go in like, with like, like... My boy, you played the clarinet. Okay. No, not not just the clarinet. I had to learn. It's levels. She played the bass clarinet. And the clarinet. You know what I'm saying? And I used to dabble in the oboe too. I don't even know what the hell that is. But anyway, <laughs> it's it, another woodwind instrument. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so the bands, she does know a lot of bands. She has taught me a lot about the bands, you know. Everybody, I just, all I knew about the bands when I got to college was drumline. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking, you know what I'm saying, P1, Everybody P2, can't be on the drumline. You know what I'm saying? The crab, you know what I'm saying? Oh. It's all about the tuba shorty. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so it's a band thing, but the bands are up there. Even me as a person that love um, the the game, the bands are a very interesting thing. And if you have not ever seen an HBCU band, if you're listening, go to your closest HBCU game, get the band, watch the bands. You will not be disappointed. All the way from Division Two, the smaller schools to the bigger ones, the bands are great. That's why, like sometimes. The Battle of the Band shows have more people at them than the actual football games. This is a fact. But um, the bands. The only thing I really care about is hearing a song that, you know, I want to hear. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to hear. Let me tell you what I'm, what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that first part when the dancers dance. I'm trying to hear that old school song that, you know what I'm saying, like a candy. Yeah. Or like, um, 
like a Frankie Beverly before I let you go. Uh-huh. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to hear that song first. Uh-huh. Like, I want to hear how your band sounds. Right. Like, them songs show how your band sounds, like a Whitney Houston song mm-hmm. or anything like that. I want to hear that. Yeah, the word that you're looking for is musicality. Musicality. Okay, see, told you she was a band nerd. <laughs> um, then, all I care about then is how we about to dance and then how we about to, you know what I'm saying, get down. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That's what I care about. Mm-hmm. You know, the bands. Like, me personally... It's the whole thing of the atmosphere of the game. Because the bands also in the stands, if you, some people don't be there that long, but in the stands, that's when they really play their stuff and they really get after it. But tell me a little bit about what somebody can notice, look at next time when they're playing, when they're watching the game, right? So tell me a little bit about maybe some formations, because some bands are big in formations. Uh-huh. Um, tell me a little bit about what to listen to, see if the band sound, what makes the band sound good. Some of us too, I'm like, shit, that sound good. And I've been in games like, mm, that sound good. You're like, mm, they ain't that great. I've been there looking at dances like, mm, they look good. You're like, mm, she kind of off. Like, Okay, well, don't try to make me feel like I just be judging. I'm not I like mean, a... I'm not judging. I mean, I'm only like a high school band. You know, these but people you be, are playing but you in college. I know, but you had you said, like, when you can tell when the band... Like, this, tell them a little bit about what you look at in formations. Okay. And then tell them a little bit, like, what you listen to when you know, when you, tell me what it looks like when you know a band is really all good. Like, the band is good. I'm going to let you, let you talk about it. Okay, so, first off, I think it depends on what type of school that you go to is what type of style of band that you're going to get. So, you what's have. The, what's the different styles? Okay, so you have high step, which is what you see most HBCUs doing. So, that's like your drum line where people are, you know, they're high stepping. Their mm-hmm. knees are touching their chest. They're high stepping. They're marching. Then you have, oh, I don't know what the other style is. What's the one like, where they be running real fast and stuff? It's like military. I can't think of what it's called. That's what I. So, I had two experiences. I had the more PWI experience. I believe it's called, ooh, the. Some I, HBCUs. Do the Some HBCUs do it too. It, they go like back and forth. Type it's like style. military, maybe, but that is not high step. Your feet are low to the ground and you're moving quick, right? Now everyone has formations. Um, the difference is it's not as much of a show with one style than the other. So, like with more of the military style, it's really just about the formation. So they're moving in these intricate designs and you're just stepping, but they're making like you see some schools where they have a dragon that's eating a smaller dragon and it's all these intricate steps. So that's really impressive. But when it comes to Well what the not to cut you off though, Oh, okay. But I'm gonna cut you off because this is my show. Uh-huh. IDK Sports Pod every Sunday. Uh-huh. But um Sorry, I got I was getting can you tell I was into it? Yeah I can tell you was about to you about to go off. You about to go in? Yeah, what? You about to go in? But I just want to cut you off because I, I remember, and I never forget an anti homecoming when I was a kid. Uh huh. They played Love Train. Yeah. And they made a train and had like somebody hold like a sparkler with smoke. Uh huh. And I was like, to me, and I was sitting up high back then. Yeah. And I was like, yo, like, how do you practice that? Like, uh-huh. how do you make sure everybody's in the same spot? Yeah. And they made a train at the right time uh-huh. where they played the verse and they said people all around the world. And then they had, like, they played good uh-huh. and they made the train. So people singing the song. They had the fans singing the song uh-huh. while they make a train. Like, how does that... That's amazing to me. I, I mean, don't know. It's, <laughs> it's like, practice. the feel is level. I mean, <laughs> I, have, I was not the... Um, Oh, dang. I wasn't the drum major, so I can't speak to how you make the design, but as someone who was like the pawn, I would say, the little marcher, marching back and forth, Mm -hmm. it is fun to be a part of a bigger picture, but it's really all steps in different places on the field. So just like, you know, you learn the 50-yard line and you use the same things that the football players use, actually, Mm -hmm. to measure how far they go, you use those same markings when you're marching in place. Whether you're high step or you're doing the other way, you're still using those things. So that's really interesting. Now, when it comes to what you're listening for the truth is everybody isn't going to be playing like like for example some people are really good at the steps but they can't necessarily step march and play at the same time this is somebody very, out here some people out here lip playing i mean <laughs> i guess if you want to say so the, that so the horn be up to their lips but there's no sound they're, they're coming not out. Blowing. oh no Pause. there has that was wild. <laughs> <laughs> that 
<laughs> we won't be ending that one out, folks. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Um, so, yeah, the horn is up to their lips, as you said, and they are not blowing. So, that does happen because it is hard to memorize the music because some of the music is still, even though these are songs that we love and that are cherished, they are hard to memorize and learn. And sometimes people can't get the steps, but they're really good at getting the steps down Mm -hmm. so I know for when it was my turn to do it and I was like I was a freshman but only one freshman could be on the field at a time but I usually always got picked even though I wasn't as strong of a player because I could get the steps and at the end of the day getting the steps is the most important thing so that's why you can hear like in the stands some teams they're louder in the stands but they get on the field you'd be like dang what happened Because some people can do it in the stands, but they can't get the steps and play. Exactly. Now, this is just my humble high school experience. You know, we don't have any people that we know personally that can get on the pod that can speak to what it's like to do it in college. But that has been my experience. Yeah. So, um, the bands, man. Like, and I, the dancers, oh my gosh. Yeah, the dancers. The dancers, the major reds. That's my favorite part of the show. When they dance, when they mm-hmm. get their little segment in. Yeah, I always low key wanted to be a dancer, but I was like, no, girl, you play the clarinet. You can't dance like that for real. What about the girls that be twirling the. Uh, what's that oh, I have no coordination. I could never get my baton to twirl. I would practice, and I was like, I didn't make the team. <laughs> <You got cut. laughs> I didn't even make it to get cut. Wow. They said, you can't, you're not good enough, basically. Wow. So, yeah, so. But the bands are, like, no matter what you want to say, the bands are an integral part. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think, I think uh, it does, doesn't matter what type of school you go to, depending on, no, well, it's just the culture of your school. Some schools. I, okay, that's right. Bands do need that. But at the HBCU, you can't have the football team games without the bands. Yeah, that's true. The band, when they like, it's been games where, like, the band has a competition, the band's not there. And, this, and it's they're cool. Missed. They're missed. It's cool to have a DJ, but sometimes people want to, you know, yeah. hear the part. Like, we have a whole thing called the fifth quarter. People stay after the game just hear the bands play. They do. They do. You know, so, you know, bands and tailgates So one of my biggest advice to everybody, if you haven't been to a HBCU football game, Go. Even if you don't like football, I think it's a very fun experience. Yeah, Beyonce definitely gave us what the feeling of what it's going to give. Um, and if you thought that I was going to be on this podcast and not mention Bay and her homecoming performance at, you know, Beachella, then... It was Coachella. Was it, though? Was it Coachella or was it her show and everybody else was her opening act? I mean, we don't have to debate it because the girls that get it, get it, and the girls that don't, don't. But what I'm saying is that is only a fraction of what you get if you actually were to, you know, go to HBCU tailgate or homecoming. Yeah, so let's talk about one last thing before we get out of here because, you know. Oh, we have more to talk about? Yeah, we got one more thing to talk about. Okay. It's It's a privilege to be on this pod. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm privilege. sorry. I I is a privilege. I am woo. Yeah. So thankful. Baby. This the one I know it's, I don't know what I'm talking about, but this is probably like the one thing that I actually might know what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Maybe just a little bit. Mm-hmm. What's your plate? If you can make your perfect tailgate plate. Oh, I don't eat at tailgates. Why don't you eat at tailgates? I mean, I I cuz I'm like I'm trying to be cute. So like I'm eating a small plate and I'm drinking. So your plate is low vibrational? Like, if I get a lot of, I'm low vibe? I'm low vibe. <laughs> I mean, I... You too, your, your vibe's too high? No, 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 no. I mean, the high vibrational high plate, because it's not, you got to bit backwards. My brain is hot. My so my plate, plate be low. Well, let me talk about you my... You got a low vibrational plate. Let me talk about my low vibrational ass plate, okay? Because I ain't bougie. I'm going to eat. All right? So I'm going to get a sausage dog. Uh-huh. And I'm going to get a fish. The fish with the white bread, put the hot sauce on it, but let that hot sauce sit so it get on that white bread too. I'm not really a big mustard fan, but I know some of y'all out there gotta have that mustard too. You know what I'm saying? Get fries. Uh huh. Or hush puppies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Definitely gotta get the hush puppies. Uh, no, no, you, you, you're high vibration. Don't stay over there. Oh, okay. Sorry. Just stay over there. But now you're making it sound good, so nah, I feel nah, like I wanna hop in there. Okay, at homecoming, you okay, know, at homecoming whoa, 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 my plate whoa, whoa, whoa. is not the same as it is can I, on can a regular I, can thing. Cannot, cannot speak. 
Okay, sorry. You told me to act like how we talk at home. You're trying to take over my time. I cut you off all the time. Anyway, so... Anyway, my my low vibrational plate, like I said, gave me a sausage dog, a couple pieces of fish, bread underneath. Don't put the bread on top or or, or it's the aluminum foil. I like the bread underneath because it's like warm and yeah, kind of and, soft. Yeah, and it's and it soaks up all that that fish grease. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Fries or uh-huh. hush puppies. You know what I'm saying? If you if you a real one, get, and they got it there, they'll get you a smoked turkey leg. Them just fire. <laughs> or turkey wings. Them just is fire. Um, what else they usually have? You didn't mention anything about like a dessert. No, I might go for dessert. Fried Oreos and funnel cakes. Are we talking about a carnival? Or are we talking about a tailgate? Talking so, about at somebody's tailgate. I'm not talking about a vendor. I'm talking about somebody's actual somebody's uncle with the with the cookout five thousands on back there cooking. <laughs> okay, there's no desserts usually. You're right. Exactly. So that's my low vibrational page. Tangie's gonna have a drink in hand and maybe. I'm going to eat something because I want to, you know, have longevity for the entire tailgate because I don't care about the game. I'm there for the tailgate. So I'm going to start off light. You know, I'm going to have like maybe my chicken and whatever like veggie option that's available probably. And then I'm going to have a few strong drinks in my hand. And then I'll probably eat one more time. A a few strong drinks? Not at the same time. double fisting drinks out here? I'm saying like... Throughout the night, you're going to see me with a cup in my hand, always. I think this is a good spot to end it at. You know what I'm saying? Y'all pray for my wife. I'm going to take her to an AA meeting because <laughs> this is all news to me. <laughs> but anyway, y'all stay tuned. Um, well, Tangie, I thank you. You're welcome. For coming through mm-hmm. to the IDK Sports Podcast Have Lab. Have back anytime. Mm-hmm. I'll see you next segment for um, sports terms for W. Yeah, we will see if that makes the cut. But anyway, y'all stay tuned for more of this episode. All right, everybody, with week three wrapping up, currently in college football, I want to go ahead and do my recap and talk about some of the programs I'll be watching tomorrow. It's currently about 11 o'clock here on the East Coast. And most of the games are done. Got a few West Coast games finishing up. For example, Colorado and Colorado State just kicked off not too long ago. 7-7 seven to seven right now. Um, very highly charged game by the Stars there. Um, big rivalry game. So we'll see how that goes. Um, week 3, I think, basically showed my point, if you listen to my last pod, about how the transfer portal has changed teams' fortunes overnight. Give you a couple examples. Florida State um, was in a dogfight with uh, Boston College, 31 to 29. It's the number three ranked team in the nation. Dogfight with um, Boston College, um, Kansas State, the 15th ranked team in the nation, it falls to Mizzou, 27 to 30. That's that's wild. Mizzou only won two games last year. I mean, I'm telling you, this transfer portal has changed people's fortunes. Wake Forest had the dogfight to come back to beat ODU. It's the same ODU team that lost to two FCS schools last year. Only one, I think, combined in the last two years, maybe five games. And they had to, Wake Forest had to fight back to beat them um, at ODU's home opener. Um. Currently, as we speak right now, also going on Texas in a dogfight with Wyoming. It's the same Texas team that went to Alabama and beat Alabama. And they're in a 17-10 dogfight with Wyoming. And their counterparts, Alabama, had to fight to beat South Florida 17-3. Like, this year, out of all years, is going to be a tough year to see who's a dominant team. I think Georgia's still... Pretty dominant. I, I'm pretty sure they won today. Um, but they were down. They didn't look that great either. Um, only beating South Carolina 24 to 14. So I'm telling you, this year this transfer portal has changed team fortunes. Some of these teams are just way better this year, and some of your dominant teams are not that much better than the teams that you had that are normally your national powers, like your Alabama, your Georgias your Florida States and all them. So, um, another 
thing that happened today on the recap of this college football weekend. I think the HBCUs took a hit on the FCS level. Um, before I talk about the ones that lost, shout out to Hampton for the seventh year in a row beating Howard in the battle of the real HU. Hampton was down, I think, about 10 points going late into the fourth quarter. Fought their way back to win that game 35 to 34, outrushed. Um, ran for over 250 yards on Howard, and that's seven years in a row. So Hampton would have bounced back after losing to Norfolk State. So shout out to Hampton. Um, and T goes to Elon and loses 27 to 3. Just did not look good. Um, couldn't really move the ball against Elon, and I think the defense just wore down at the end. Um, Morgan State playing crosstown rivals Townsend loses 20 to 10. A lot of high hopes were happening for Morgan in my eyes because they almost beat the FBS school in Akron, but just couldn't get it done against Townsend. Got went down 20 to nothing and could never recover um, fully from that. Um, in the SWAC, you had Alabama State lose. I mean Alabama and them loses to Southern 20 to 10. Um, Southern gets their first win of the year. Real sloppy game. I think they had like six turnovers and all. Um, and all in that game. And then everybody else really paid Division II opponents or opponents that they should have beaten, so they're really not worth talking about. But just with the recap of college football, I'm telling y'all, it's going to be an exciting year because this transfer portal has changed some of your teams that's usually not that good to making them being able to beat some of your traditional powers and your powerhouses in college football. We haven't even gotten to conference play yet. We haven't even got to, like, the meat of the college football schedule. These are still early games. If Alabama's struggling to beat USF, what they going to do when they play LSU? Or when they play another SEC school? If Texas sometimes can struggle against Wyoming, what's going to happen when they play Baylor? Or what's going to happen when they play um, a TCU? Like, I'm telling you, it's going to be a lot of upsets this year. I see both teams make it to the national champion. You could have one with one loss and one with two losses. That's how much parity I think is in the college football season this year. Um, as far as um, on the FCS ranks, you know, the HBCUs play. A lot of people played their money games today. So a lot of people had to, you know what I'm saying, get your check, go home, um, stay healthy, you know. But even on that level, even on the FCS level, you still got a lot of teams that are doing that are a lot better than they were last year, and some teams are surprisingly not as good as we may have thought. Um, but this college football season is going to be exciting. I'm telling you, tune in every Saturday, every Saturday to college football, so you can see how good some of these teams are. And it's gonna, even if it's like a regular game, you think it should not be that good, like a. Illinois versus Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Illinois usually loses them games, but they're better this year. Kansas is better this year. Um, a lot of the SEC schools are better this year. A lot of the ACC schools are better this year. So, this is a little, you know, you listen to my last pod, I suggest you go back and listen to it and hear what I really broke down, how the transfer portal is going to make things better. Um, looking at tomorrow, NFL tomorrow, the full slate of games. A couple of games I'm interested in is at the 1 o'clock time slot, you got the Chiefs and the Jaguars. It's kind of like the the present and the future going on right there. You got Patrick Mahomes going up against Trevor Lawrence. The Chiefs didn't look that great on Thursday night. And then you got the Jaguars who look like they have a lot of weapons on offense. A lot of weapons on offense. And Trevor Lawrence is really starting to come into his own as a really good quarterback and showing why he was the number one pick overall. Another game you got uh, at the 1 o'clock is the Ravens and the Bengals. Another AFC um, North game. And the Bengals need to win bad because you don't want to go down two games against division opponents. Lost to the Browns last week. Now you got the Ravens coming into town. Couldn't really move the ball. Lamar versus Joe. Interesting division game right off the bat that I'm interested in seeing. Um, 
Another game is the Colts and the Texans. See the two young boys, Anthony Richardson, look really good to me in this first game. Didn't catch much of C.J. Shroud, but I don't think he did anything spectacular. But you get to see the two young quarterbacks go head-to-head against each other. Um, a couple of other games that you might be interested in. And the Dolphins and Patriots game is a close game because Bill Belichick defense is really good. But the Dolphins has a very, very, very high-powered offense. So, um... We'll see how that goes for the Sunday night game. That could be either a struggle or that could be a or it could be a blowout. I mean, I don't see it really being like the Patriots blowing the Dolphins out. I can see the Dolphins blowing the Patriots out, but I really see it possibly being a struggle. Um, a defensive struggle where it might be a game like 24-21 where the Patriots really take away what the Dolphins do great. Um... Besides that, got a couple games. Got the Bills trying to bounce back against the Raiders. I think they do that. We got the Chargers and Titans both looking for their first win. I think the Chargers pulled that off, even though they are coming to Tennessee and playing a 1 o'clock game. I think they still can pull it off. You know, the Titans, I think the Titans' offense and their defense is just not that good. I think the Titans just I think the time, the window is closed for them to be that good of a team, in my eyes. Um, the Seahawks and Lions play again a West Coast team coming to the Midwest and playing an early game um, Seahawks you know lost last week trying to bounce back Lions trying to ride the momentum of their win against the Chiefs I still see the Lions probably winning that game and spread is four and a half points and I see this game probably being a 2017 game I think it's a low scoring game but I think I do see the Lions pulling it off because the West Coast team is coming across to, well, not the East Coast, but they're coming to the Midwest. Still an early game for a West Coast team to play. Um, but yeah, man, this, this, that's just really my recap for this weekend. Still watching this Colorado, Colorado State game. It's 14 to 14 now. And I think Colorado has to control their emotions. I think they got too high and they're letting this team stick around. If you let a, a team that you're supposed to beat stick around, Everybody knows sometimes they can catch you at the end. So, be interesting to see how that ends up. But right now, it's 14 to 14 going into the second quarter. Um, great episode this week. Had my lovely wife stop by. We talked about tailgating and the band, something that a lot of people that's probably listening can relate to. Um, and again, I appreciate you all for listening. Catch me every Sunday or anywhere you get your podcast at Apple Pod, Spotify, anywhere you want to listen. Follow me at IDK Sports Pod 23 on Instagram. Don't forget, you can DM me um, topics that you would like me to talk about, and I will talk about anything sports related. Um, really got some good things coming up. Got a couple segments that I think everybody would like, and um, just stay tuned with me. You can subscribe. So you'll know and when you get the notification when I release. We're going to release every Sunday. And it's going to be before the football game. So you can hear some of my takes about NFL. So maybe you can paste some good bets or parlays. Maybe if that's what you're into. Or help you with your fantasy football team. But until next time, y'all be easy.